we're going to have a, a lesson in physics, um, specifically mechanics, which is a, a branch of physics. Um, real quickly, can anyone give a very simple, don't try to get all brainiac with me, but a simple definition of what is physics? And Kian, are you able to see with that pole right there? Yeah, yeah, I can see. If you want to move, move closer up, that, that might be useful. Yes, is it Jasmine? I'm nine. <laughs> the way things work. The way things work. Oh, I love that. Let's hear another one. The way things physically work. <laughs> okay, the way things physically work. Cool. Because it could chemically work or spiritually work. Yeah. We don't know. Um, so the way things physically work. I like it. Physics. Yeah, the way things physically work. I can dig that. Yeah, so it's kind of the study of, uh, of physical things and how they move, how they work, how they interconnect, interact. So yeah, I mean, physics is kind of like the study of stuff, pretty much. Now you have, um, you can study stuff like gravity and, and things are moving. Um, and then if you study things for a long time, you can start to study like very small microscopic how does stuff physically work. And so that's where you have, there's classical mechanics um, and quantum mechanics. Have you heard of quantum mechanics? Yeah. Ooh. I've heard that. Yeah. So classical mechanics is, um, uh, like I said, just studying moving objects and interactions of things that you can see and work with. Um, and then quantum mechanics is when uh, you study physical things so much, and then you start to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then at a, such a small microscopic level, um, stuff, uh, matter, do you guys use the word matter? Meaning stuff. Matter and energy start to behave exactly the same when you get really, really, really small. Small, small, small stuff. And then this classical mechanics starts to turn into quantum mechanics where things get weird. And um, let's not eat in the chemistry lab. So it's just a, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, so at, the, at the, the very small level, energy starts to act like matter. You guys seen that thing? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, energy is mass times the speed of light squared. It's kind of neat. Um, anyway, uh, we're not going to do quantum mechanics today. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do classical mechanics. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to have to use a lot of math. Now, now let me let me tell you, um, math is a really nifty thing. And uh, math just by itself, you got some numbers and equations and stuff, and you're like, oh, that's neat. But I don't know if it really means anything. But uh, physics is when you're looking at actual objects and machines and things happening in the, in the real world, and then math becomes super useful. So physics is really just applied mathematics. Yeah? Um, Einstein said that math is, is the poetry of logical ideas. I love that, right? Math is like poetry for, for, for logic. Does that, does that sound reasonable? Yeah. yeah. Right, because you have this beautiful equation. It's just, math is just this elegant haiku of quantifiable data or something. I don't know, maybe I'm getting too weird. But uh, math is a really neat thing, but it becomes useful when we can apply it to things. And so physics is really using math to our advantage to be able to design, predict, calculate, and, and come up with, with answers to questions we would otherwise not have. So, um, I'm going to throw out a bunch of math that you've probably never seen before. And uh, you're welcome to um, try to jot down a thing or two. Well, I'm going to tell you straight up, don't try to write down everything I write down on the board. So I'm going to write a bunch of stuff and you're going to be like, what? And it's going to get crazy because it's going to get super mathematical. Um, so it would be better if you can kind of lean back and try to follow the big ideas of what's happening. And what I'm going to do anyway is this is what I do with, with uh, my math classes is I have, I have a little camera right here and I videotape my math classes and then I put them on YouTube so if someone was absent they can watch the video oh, and, and get what they missed. So I'm going to record this and then I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'll send Miss Scott a link. So if you guys are like, what was that crazy thing with the equation he was talking about? You can watch the video if you want to get all nerdy. You can watch the video and see what it was. Um, so don't worry about trying to copy everything down. We're trying to understand all of the math because you guys still have a couple years of math to get where we're going here, right? And so uh, the, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm trying to cram in a whole bunch of super gangster math and physics into an hour and a half. 
right? So this is going to be, this is a challenge for me. So I'm, I'm taking up a challenge and I'm going to try to make this happen. Um, and if at any point you're like, I don't know what all those equations mean, again, don't worry about understanding all of the math behind it. Just see the big ideas of, oh, he just used math to calculate this thing and that's pretty nifty. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, so if I wanted to calculate the speed of that, how would I do that? Or could I measure the speed? Maybe that would be easy. How would I measure the speed? And what do you think? Can I measure the speed? Of, so like, huh, how fast, ooh, I shouldn't do that. Um, how fast did I uh, throw that? How do I measure the speed of that? Oh, no? Don, what do you think? Uh, well, so first we would have to figure out the factors, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, we have to figure out the factors like, you know, momentum and like wind resistance or something like that. Ooh, all that stuff. Okay, so there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, how about, so let's say I wanted to uh, calculate how many feet per second that is. How many feet per second um, that's speed. Any, any other ideas? What is your name, sir? Oh, me? Yes. Uh, Enzo. Enzo. What uh, do you think? Uh, uh, I was guess like, sort so, so of what Doc said, like, you have to take, like, you know, um, the, uh, like, how, like, like, quite the weight of the bead bag, probably, like, the strength of your arm, and probably the gravity of this planet. <laughs> oh my god. Let me, let me stop you guys. You guys are getting way too complicated. That's really cool and you're thinking and that's good. But let's just, in a general, very simple way, I want to find how many feet per second this is going. And something that I could do without like calculating the momentum of air molecules and like get, you know what I mean? Like a very simple, basic, how many feet per second? Keen, what do you think? A radar gun. A radar gun. Let's say I don't have a radar gun, but maybe I have a big ruler and a stopwatch. Oh. Matthew, what do you think? I need to know the distance and the time. Exactly. If I had the distance from here to here, and I said, oh, this is, you know, nine feet, and it took me beep, beep, and it was one second, I'd be like, cool, nine feet per second. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can find the speed, but now I calculated the speed. I didn't measure the speed, did I? I had to calculate it, which is fine, because it, it turns out to be accurate. I have the distance divided by the, the time that it took, so that the speed was like the distance divided by the time. That's cool. Is there any way to measure the actual s speed? Because, well, how about this? Radar gun. How does the radar gun do it? The radar gun measures distance and it measures time and it calculates it. It doesn't actually measure speed. So let me just tell you the answer to that question I just posed. You can't measure speed. No one can measure speed. We can calculate speed. The speedometer on your car, it's, it's finding out how much distance you're traveling over time and it's creating that. So we can measure distance, we can measure time, but we cannot measure speed. Wow. <laughs> so the study of motion is a weird thing. Right, because um, it's almost like we can't we can't measure the motion, but we can measure the distance and the time and kind of create. It's crazy. It's crazy. You're gonna toss and turn tonight. Oh, what? The motion. Anyway, so um, there's this guy named Galileo. Oh, really? He's pretty neat. He like 500 years ago or something. He's the guy who started doing experiments. Before then, it was a bunch of dudes and togas sitting around drawing diagrams in the sand saying, I have ideas about things, and no one ever tested it. You know, and, uh, and Galileo was like, let's do some experiments. Let's actually measure some things, right? And so he started, you know, science as we know it by doing experiments. That's pretty nifty. Um, so how about if I wanted to, um, if I were to toss this thing straight up and down, and I wanted to somehow calculate the, the height that it goes. Um, if I wanted to make an equation for the height of this thing as I throw it up into the air. Hmm, the height. Uh, what are the factors? And don't, I don't want to hear about the density of the, the barometric pressure moving through the, 
don't get all crazy on me. What are the basic factors that affect how high this thing get, goes into the air? Remind me your name. Uh, Manny. Manny. Yeah, isn't it like, like this, like speed of it, and then like the time? So, so we have the speed at which you throw it. Cool, that's one of them. Right, let me put this up here. So the the speed of your throw. And then the uh, and then the uh, like rate. But the speed is the rate, right? Yeah. Um, so let, let me get somebody else. There's some other things that factor in. Yes? Would it be like how your arm throws it up? Like how hard? Um, so we're, we're going to put that, we're going to ball that up into here. Okay. That, that's how fast you threw it. Now, um, what are some other factors here? Gravity. For sure. Gravity is a thing that happens most of the time. So we're going to have a gravity thing happening. We're going to have a speed of our initial throw happening. And then there's another factor. Anyone know what that other factor is? Yes, sir. Uh, distance? Would it be the distance? Yeah, that's what we're to throw it out. So we're throwing it straight up into the air. Oh, OK. I thought you were and, and this height this height is like a vertical distance. Oh, I thought we were but, measuring that. But you're, you're, you're close. Oh, the time from when it leaves your hand to when it comes back into your Absolutely, yeah. We are, we're going we're gonna to measure the time. So. Um, I don't know how time is going to factor into this. T time is going to be in, in here somewhere. Um, there's there's going to be some time stuff happening. Because time, gravity and time, they're going to be friends. And the speed that you threw it and time, they're going to factor in together. Um, how about, um, uh, watch this, here's a hint. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dom. There's a bunch of equations, but I don't want to be like, here's what Google told me. We're trying to come up with it. What do you think? Oh, how high your hand is. Yeah, how high your hand is. So if I threw it from right here, the total height that it goes might be different if I threw it from down here. So we'll call that the initial height. The initial height. So this is going to be the three parts of my equation that time somehow factors in. And um, let's say... Uh, <laughs> I totally smashed my head on the ceiling. No one laughed. I did. I thought it was kind of funny. Okay, initial height. Let's um. I was trying to be polite. Okay, thank you. That was so nice of you. Okay, so the height, um, the height at any time, is gonna be a factor of these things. Initial height. I'm gonna say h with a little subscript. We call it zero. You no, know, an exponent where you do like five squared is 25. <laughs> So this is kind of like a, an exponent, but a down component. Anyway, but it, it's, not, it's not math. This is just a label. So this is the height after zero seconds. Is that OK? <coughs> this is my initial height. So this is just a variable. So I'm starting with this height. Now the, the speed, let's try to figure out how distance is a factor of speed. So if I were to drive 60 miles per hour, driving 60 miles per hour, for one hour, how far did I go? 60 miles. I went 60 miles. It's rocket surgery. I went 60 miles. Right? So what did I do? I did my, the speed, I did the, the speed, can I call speed velocity? Is that too nerdy? No, no. Okay, velocity. You guys have heard this word, right? Mm -hmm. Speed, velocity. Yeah, they, they mean the same thing, but velocity, you can go, yes, <laughs> the velocity. And you can sound smarter. Okay, so the velocity, this is my velocity. And, and how did, what did we do mathematically to get this? What did I do with the time? Divided it. <laughs> we multiplied it. We said 60 miles per hour times one hour. Because if I drove for two hours, I would have went 120 miles, right? So velocity times time equals the distance that it travels. So if we're talking about like vertical distance, and it, the speed of my throw, I'm going to call it the initial velocity. So v sub zero. Again, you don't have to take notes on this if it's, if it's too crazy, uh, but you can if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, multiplied by the time. OK. And now this gravity thing. Ugh, uh, so we're going to have to do like several hundred years of, of discovery in the next five minutes in order to come up with this term right here. So um, 
Let's uh, Dom, just just hold tight, buddy, because uh, I don't I don't think we have enough time to to answer all the questions or all the ideas. So let me just try to come up with this gravity for you guys. So I'm gonna set this <coughs> equation. I'm gonna set this over here because I only have one chalkboard. I need to conserve space. So height is gonna be a thing plus initial velocity times time plus the initial height. And I'm gonna free up this space here. Whew. Okay, it's about to get serious. So uh, we're gonna try to derive um, the acceleration due to gravity. We're gonna find out how gravity works right now. Um, so just try to follow me, right? Just try your best, it's gonna get crazy. Um, so the average velocity, um, the velocity, it's kind of like, um, so miles per hour, it's miles over hour. It's distance divided by time. Am I right or am I right? Velocity is distance over time? Yes. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah. All right. Is that Bryn? Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. And now also we could say the average velocity. Um, you guys know how to find the average of a couple numbers? Oh, you guys average? Yeah. So if you have, say, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The numbers four and six. Well, how do you find the average of them, sir? You add them both and then divide them by how many numbers you add. Yeah. So ten divided by two equals five. Beautiful. And five is right in the middle of those. It's the average. That makes sense. So average velocity, I could say, is my beginning velocity plus my final velocity divided by two. Yeah, because we're, we're, and let's imagine, because um, you're like, velocity of what, bro? Let's say, let's say I'm dropping, I'm just dropping something from rest like this. And we're just observing how gravity affects it. And there's distance and there's time and there's velocities and things happening here. So if I'm doing this, um, <coughs> what is my initial velocity right now? Ready? What was the starting velocity at the instant that I let it go? It was zero, and then it sped up, right? Uh -huh. So initial velocity is zero. So does that mean I can kind of do this? Yeah. Is that all right? No, no initial velocity for just dropping something. And so now, if the average velocity equals this, and the average velocity equals this, can I set this equal to this? They just yes. Yes. Because <laughs> they're the same thing, so they better be equal. So the distance divided by time equals the final velocity divided by 2. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by 2, basically the 2 comes over here, and it, it goes away from here. So um, the final velocity, I'm going to set this over here. Final velocity is 2 times the distance divided by time. I'm going to use this in a moment. So this is going to happen fast, and I'm going to erase stuff, and you're going to be like, why don't you erase that? Um, you can watch the video later. Um, oh, Bryn, I'm, I'm videotaping this. I'm going to put it on YouTube so you guys can check it out. <coughs> watch it on the weekend, popcorn, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, acceleration. This is the next thing we're going to talk about. Acceleration. So if I'm in my, if I'm in my Mercedes Benz, <laughs> it's not a thing. Anyway, but if I was in a Mercedes and I was going zero miles per hour and I stepped on the accelerator, and then I was doing 10 miles per hour. Uh, do, you, do you see my velocity was zero and then my velocity was 10. My velocity was changing over time, right? So acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up here because it's fancy. Uh, this means change in. So change in velocity over change in time. <laughs> it's real fancy looking. Um, but all that means is, uh, it's a Greek letter, delta V over delta T, so don't panic. So change in velocity, that means my final velocity minus the initial velocity, right? I was going zero miles per hour, I'm going 10 miles per hour. So the change was what? 10. 10. So I did 10 minus zero. But even if I was going 30 and I sped up to 40, the change would be 10, right? Because I but either which way, again, we're thinking about this. What's my initial velocity? Zero. Zero. So, um, oh, let, let me write this. The, the change in time is the final time 
minus the initial time. But um, we're going to say the initial velocity is zero, right? We just said that. And then if my starting time, if I make the starting time be zero when it starts, which makes sense, that's stopwatch. Uh, can we just do that? Yeah. Oh, okay, so acceleration is the final velocity divided by the, the, the total time, the final time here. Now, isn't VF equal to this thing? So this VF, I can substitute this into here. Do you believe me? Yes. Okay, um, so final velocity is 2d over t, <coughs> this, divided by the final time. Oh, and this was like the final time, basically. Wait, what's t? We'll just call it t. That's fine. I'll just call it t. The time. You know what I'm talking about. The time. Um, now, isn't this t, isn't that like t over 1? See, right, like the number three, isn't that the number three? Yeah? yeah. yeah? yeah. You with it, maybe? Yeah. This is three, right? So this is t over one is the same thing as t. Now, a fraction divided by a fraction, who wants to do that? Not me. So <laughs> what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as multiplying by one over t. So this might be crazy. If you... If this is too crazy, uh, it's, it's all right. Um, so, 2d times 1, so acceleration is 2 times the distance this thing's traveled, and t times t is going to be t squared. t squared. Booyah. So this is uh, how acceleration works. Is that a formula? Or is it like a... It's a formula. I mean, we can make formulas all day, you know what I mean? That's what I do. I make formulas. Um, and there's physics, has, there's a million formulas. And so there is no like, what's the magic formula? It's just you have to think about it in every single situation and say, well, what, what does this situation call for? And let me use my brain and let me use some mathematics to come up with something. And not say, what's the formula? Because who knows, right? You may have to make your own formula. All right, so this is acceleration due to gravity because gravity clearly accelerates things. Now, if I wanted to calculate and find a number that I can put on this, I'm going to need a distance and a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, um, let's see. This ceiling is an eight-foot ceiling. <coughs> and I know that this is a fact. Can you use the Well, there's this, like, little mat here. That may lift me off the ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it right here. So, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure we have eight feet. So, um, I'm going to start timing when it hits the ceiling and when it hits the floor. So, we'll get the time of, of this. Get it ready? Okay, I got 0.64 seconds. 0 0.66. 0 0.85. 0 0.7. So I got like 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. The thing is, you want to do this and then take an average. Can we just say 0 0.7? Yeah. Is the average? Yeah, because I would do this all day. So, okay, it takes about 0 0.7 seconds. So let's find the acceleration. Um, is 2 times uh, 8 feet divided by 0 0.7 seconds squared. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. What's 7 squared? 49. 49. So that's... And, um, ah, well, look at that. There's a calculator. 16 divided by 0.49. So it's about 32. Right? I'm just going to round it. It's approximately 32. Oh, think about that. Like 0.5. How many, how many times does a half go into 16? 32 times. Yeah? So 32, and the units for this, what are the units for distance right now? Feet. feet. And what are the units for T? Seconds. Second. So it's feet per second squared? Per second squared. Feet, yeah, it sounds a little crazy. You're going to be like, what's a square second? Right? So... <laughs> 
It's kind, of, kind of ridiculous. Think about it like this. If I'm going, um, you know, two feet per second, and then I speed up to three feet per second, and it took me one second to accelerate, I increased by one foot per second per second. Right? So acceleration is an increase in feet per second per second. So feet per second squared. Ashlyn, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, make him stop. <laughs> okay, so, so this is gravity on Earth uh, creates an acceleration of 32 feet per second squared. Woo! Okay, so gravity, 32 feet per second squared. That's a thing. Okay, um, now check this out. If I want to know, going back to here, because we just learned something about gravity, we want to fill in a thing here, and we want to find uh, the height that, that gravity creates here, right? So um, it's a vertical distance. You need some water? Yeah. Yeah, you got that. Oh, uh, where's the oh. Just go to the right. Oh, there's one to the left also. All roads lead to Rome. So uh, what was I talking about? So the, a distance. We want to find a distance in terms of acceleration of gravity. So this is like gravity, this is acceleration, or G is gravity accelerates things, similar deal. Um, I want to find the distance. So let's solve this equation, let's move these things over here so I have distance in terms of gravity and stuff. <laughs> this is so crazy. You guys doing okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm, just, I'm nerding out, okay? Alright, so I'm going to multiply both sides by T squared, so um, let me... Let me do this. So I'm going to say uh, A is 2D over T squared. All right, let me, I'm going to start fresh. Um, if I multiply both sides by T squared, then this comes over here. And then if I divide both sides by 2, this cancels and comes over here. And then so the distance that gravity creates over a certain time is, this is like 1 half of that acceleration due to gravity times uh, the time squared. And now we, we found the acceleration due to gravity was 32, wasn't it? No. So I'm going I'm to put a 32 in here. Well, what's half of 32? 16. 16. 16. Might as well. Woo! So the distance um, of something falling. Oh, we did this. This is the uh Is that a thing? Oh, yes! Oh my oh, god! This is all the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is like the written out problem that Miss Ross didn't want to get into. <laughs> cool. Alright, so um now let's go back to tossing this thing up in the air. So there's a height. We're tossing a thing in the air. Um gravity is gravity a plus or is gravity a minus? Think about it. Minus. 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 Gravity is a minus. So I'm going to say negative 16 t squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial height. Woo! I can hardly believe it. Yeah, simple as that, right? <laughs> yeah, y'all got it, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, just right by the Okay, so. Um, we're gonna work with this. We're gonna work with me drinking some water. Mm. That cool, refreshing drink. Try it with your friends. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is um, we're gonna in probably however long it takes me to derive the next couple formulas. Um, so maybe 20 minutes from now, we're all going to stroll leisurely across the street to this big parking lot over there. And we're all going to have these tennis balls. And we're going to throw these in the air. And the only thing that we can really do is time them. Right? I mean, that's the only thing we can measure. Because I can't be like, how hot did it go? And like throw a yardstick up there. <laughs> Come on. Be fun. Um, yeah, someone would get speared. It wouldn't be good. Um, but we can, we can measure the time, right? So I want to be able to measure the time and based on this time, see if we can calculate 
uh, the maximum height that it goes, right? So that way you just throw this thing, time it, beep, beep, and then we have a formula. You plug it in and you're like, I just threw that thing 60 feet in the air, right? Because you can calculate that. Um, and what else should we calculate? We should calculate the initial speed, the initial velocity of your throw. So that's kind of interesting, right? Like how fast can you throw? And, and like who's, who brought their radar gun today? Right? <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Um, so you don't need one. If you just have the timer, if you know how much hang time that thing got, you can determine what uh, the initial velocity was. It's a pretty cool deal. That dude Galileo, he said, uh, measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not known. It's kind of profound. Measure the stuff you can measure. Beep, beep. And you can make measurable the stuff that you can't measure. You can't measure speed. You can't measure acceleration. You have to calculate it. So we have to work with the stuff that we can measure. And the only thing we can really measure is time and distance. And if we're throwing this thing in the air, we can't even measure the distance. So I want to see if we can, if we can find a way to do this. So um, here's what we're going to do. I bet you that if we, we throw this thing in the air, it makes this kind of U-shape. It does this. You can imagine a, a fancy little graph. Um, and we, we threw this thing in the air. That's going to do this. And if this is time right here, and then this is the, the height right here that it goes, um, I bet you these are brand new tennis balls and they stink. Ew. Oh, I love, I love this <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I bet you that there's some symmetry here, um, and I bet you half of the time, from the time that it leaves my hand, when it goes up in the air, to the time it comes back to the height of my hand, I bet you half of that time is the time at which it reaches its maximum height, right? H max. Um, do you believe that? Yeah, because it's like, like in a roller coaster, like you go up really fast and slow down, and then you go down. Yeah, exactly. Right, so um, so it happens symmetrically. So when when we do this thing, I'm gonna want you guys to to you're gonna throw it and go beep. As soon as it leaves your hand, you're gonna start the timer, and then don't stop it when it hits the ground. Stop it when it's like around your your hand height. So try to catch it, and you'll stop it. And even if you don't catch it, just stop it when it's around this height. That way we can use this symmetry to our advantage. Because that turns out to be uh, nice mathematically, right, Amzi? Right. <laughs> okay, so um, where do we go from here? Woo. So let's, let's imagine um, at the final time, I'm going to call it TF. That's going to be the time at which it's back to my hand's height. See, see if you can hang with me. I'm, I'm, gonna nerd, I'm nerding out, right? Let, let me be a nerd, all right? Um, let me do my thing. I'll let you do your thing. Uh, I'm going to launch it. So let's say I throw it from... Um, but we're going to plug in the, the, the final time here. So um, let's, let's, let's use this equation. Uh, negative 16 times the final time squared plus the initial velocity times the final time um, plus the initial height. At the final time, I just said that at the final time, it should be back to at the initial height, right? Zero, final time, same height. Yeah? So at the final time, it should also equal the initial height. It should be back to where it started. So I'm going to solve this equation, and I'm going to say minus the initial height on both sides, and these just cancel anyway. We get zero equals negative 16, the final time squared, plus the initial velocity, times the final time. And then if I can add this to both sides, should I do that? Um, yeah, might as well. Um, ooh, focus. You know what, I wanna solve, I wanna solve for the initial velocity. Okay, so yeah, so let's, let's add this to both sides. And this is going to cancel. So the initial velocity times the final time is 16 
final time squared. I'm going to divide both sides by this final time so that I get the initial velocity by itself. That's going to cancel. And the initial velocity is going to be equal to uh, t squared divided by t. The, one of those things canceled. 16 times the final time. So the initial velocity is 16 times how long it was in the air. That's so simple, isn't it? So if, if, I, if I throw this thing, if I throw this, um, and it's in the air for one second, my initial velocity was 16 feet per second. As soon as it leaves my hand, it left with a force that propelled it at 16 feet per second. Brynn, question? Um, so basically the equation, like the long side, is that like a balance equation? Basically you can't out together. Yeah, I'm just balancing okay. all that, just doing a whole bunch of algebra, and it's real okay. fancy looking. Because I think we, yeah, we just did that. You just started balancing the equations? Well, we finished, like, in the beginning of the year, but yeah. Awesome sauce on a sesame seed bun. So, initial velocity, we should, so maybe jot this down. Yeah, everyone write that down. So initial velocity um, is 16 times the final time. So initial velocity. So if you want to know um, how fast you threw that thing, you just need to time it, multiply by 16, boom, you got it. Yes, ma'am. Are we writing all that down? Or writing I don't know. Don't worry. No. No, Chad. Don't worry about all that. Oh, I see. <laughs> so that was, I did math, and I got a cool result. Oh, okay. That's the cool thing. Oh, this was good. Good job. Okay. Um, and now, for my next trick, I would love to find out um, the maximum height that this thing reaches, right? I want to know how high I can throw that thing in the air based on the time. Ooh, you guys ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What if you like threw your hand, threw it out with your hand in the air, but then you like, like reach your hand up, catch it, would that change it? Um, so, such a minute change that we wouldn't even notice. So all this, this is, it, we'll get a rough estimate, because even our timing skills aren't going to be perfect. So it'll be off by a foot or something, but we should be good. Dom? Would it be more exact if we, instead of ending where it was right here, ending where it stops and is going with a downward momentum and just double it instead of... So wait for it to down. hit the peak and then, and then stop it? And stop it when it's like downward momentum. Oh, as it's coming back down? Yeah, if you stopped it. Yeah, if if you stopped it at the top, eh. So that's gonna be hard to do. Yeah, um, that may introduce another complicated thing, um, and it'd be hard to time that, right? Because you're gonna throw this thing super high, and you're like, I don't know, beep, was that it? I hope so, <laughs> right? But it it'd be a lot easier to, to tell when it's right back here. I'm guessing it'll be a little bit more accurate that way. So, um, what are we going to do? We want to find the maximum height that this thing reaches. Ooh, this is bold. You guys are getting so much math and physics all at one time. This is, this is amazing. Okay, let, let's see if we can make this happen. So the maximum height is going to happen, I bet you, at half of the final time. Right, because the final time, the, the time it takes if you chop the time in half. That's when the maximum height occurs, right? Yeah, no, no. Unless, the, unless the change, unless the speed of the, unless like the, the speeds are different. Yeah, the speeds are different on the way down and up. So here's a neat thing um, that as soon as we let go of something, um, gravity is going to affect it the same way up as it does down, and it'll be the same unless there's like a vertical wind that starts blowing out of nowhere, and that would be weird. Vertical wind. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. So. So, um, yeah, we're just going to assume that the speeds are the same going up as coming down, that it's going to be symmetrical. So, i got, I got I to gotta hurry up. So, um, the maximum height, I'm going to plug into this equation, negative 16. And now, instead of t squared, I'm going to say half of the final time squared. 
right? Because we're plugging in half of the final time, right? This might get crazy, and I, I have to go fast, so sorry if your brain starts tripping out of your nose. But plus, the initial velocity times, I'm going to plug in half the final time, plugging that in, plus the initial height, and um, let's rock and roll. Negative uh, 16, if I square this, this becomes 1 fourth. Final time squared plus, uh, plus initial velocity. You know what? I bet you initial velocity, I, I got a thing for that. This is the initial velocity, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to plug in this for initial velocity. Oh. 16 oh. times the final time. Um, and then this is still there. Plus the initial height. Uh, so a fourth of that, so this is negative four, final time squared, plus uh, half of 16 is eight, and then t times t is t squared. And initial height, let's just, again, this is going to be a rough estimate. Let's say our initial height is five feet. Can we just pick a number and say five feet is our initial height? Yeah. Okay. Some people would be a little more, a little less, but let's just rock, rock out. Okay, um, and that's going to be my, my maximum height. Um, I have eight apples minus four apples. <coughs> four <coughs> apples. So, it, so this minus this is four final time squared plus five. That's my maximum height. So all I have to do is time it. So um, whatever the time is, if, if I throw this thing and it's, it's, it's in the air for a whole second, I'm going to do 1 squared is 1 times 4 plus 5, 9. Oh. So 1 second toss goes 9 feet. Pretty sweet, huh? So uh, my maximum height that this thing reaches is 4 times the final time squared plus 5 feet. That's the maximum height. So, uh, so I have these things both written down somewhere. No matter what. Well, this plus five means for us, because that's we're we're doing five feet okay. long. <coughs> so this this models what we're doing today. Like I said, in any physics experiment, you need to come up with your own equation, boss. Don't take my equation. Get your own. <laughs> I'm blocking it. Write that down. And then what we're gonna do? Woo! That was serious. <coughs> then what we're going to do is um, we're going to stroll across the street. Um, we got a bunch of timers. Um, so how about everyone is going to need um, a, a, a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper? Because what you're going to do is you're going to write down. Um, so we don't, we don't need all this anymore. Bring something to write on. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. So we're gonna do five tosses. Um, you know, and you're you're gonna use the timer, and you're gonna go, beep, beep, and you're gonna record your final time. You know, so 2.56 seconds. So no, everyone's gonna calculate. Um, Everyone's going to record their own time five five times. So you can do like a low one and then like a high one and be like, this is my best. Ugh, and so, um, and uh, so you're going to get five pieces of data. And then we're going to come back here and have some calculators. And then we're going to be able to say, what was my initial velocity of my throw? We're going to calculate it for each of these things. And then you're going to say, what was the, the maximum height of my throw? And then you're going to calculate those. And I'm sure we have some athletic people in the bunch. So someone's going to be trying, trying to get the, the fastest initial velocity and the, the maximum, the highest throw. We'll see. Is there, is, do we have any, like, pitchers? Anyone play baseball in here? All right. It's about to get serious. 